Hi everyone! In this video, we'll go over how to measure the quality of deionized water, and more specifically, how to measure the amount of dissolved solids in the water. Because deionized water has gone through a process, whether it's ion exchange or reverse osmosis, that has removed some or most of the dissolved solids from the water. So if we can measure the amount of dissolved solids in the water, then we can determine how effective the ion exchange or demineralization process is working. Now the most accurate method for measuring the amount of total dissolved solids in water is to take a water sample, evaporate the water, and weigh the remains with the precision analytical balance. However, this isn't very practical because it's very time consuming and, and also very expensive. So fortunately, we have another method that's much more convenient. And that involves measuring how an electrical current passes through the water. Because for electricity to pass through water, it requires dissolved solids to transfer electrons through the water. The dissolved solids act like small stepping stones for electricity to travel through the water. So if the water has been deionized and has very few dissolved solids, then the electrical conductivity value would be very low and the electrical resistivity would be very high. And the opposite is also true. As the dissolved solids in the water increase, the conductivity will also increase and the resistivity will decrease. So with that in mind, there are three methods that are typically used. The first is a simple quality light and you can get them with different resistivity ratings on the light. For example, this one is rated for 200 kilo ohms, which means that when the water passing over the electrodes has dropped to a resistivity of 200 kilo ohms or less, then the light will remain red. And if the water has a resistivity value greater than 200 kilo ohm, then the light will remain green. These quality lights are convenient and easy to use, but the main drawback is it can't give you a specific resistivity value. If this light is green, all you know is that the water is above 200 kilo ohm resistivity. It could be 18 mega ohms or one mega ohm or 500 kilo ohm, and you would have no way of telling. So if you need to know the exact resistivity or conductivity value of the water, then you would want to use either a handheld meter like the Myron L4P or better yet, install an inline measurement device like the Mettler Toledo M300 or M800. A handheld is nice because it's portable, easy to use, and can give you readings in conductivity, resistivity, and total dissolved solids. And some models like the Myron L6P can also measure ORP and pH. The drawback to a handheld is that it's not as accurate as an inline device like the M300 or M800 be, especially at higher resistivity values or lower conductivities. Because the water sample in a handheld meter is exposed to carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which will convert to carbonic acid, which is conductive and will result in a false reading. Also with the handheld, you have to make sure you maintain and calibrate it with the, with the correct standards. The best choice for accurate conductivity and resistivity measurement is an inline device like the M300 or M800, which use a probe that is inserted inside the water line and transmits the quality values to the meter. You can measure multiple parameters with exact values and do other things like create set points, alarms, and many other functions. Thank you for watching this video. In the section below, I added a link where you can download our water quality conversion chart that converts a range of resistivity, conductivity, and TDS values. And remember, if you have any questions, we're always here to help. Thank you.